In this video, I am talking about this little retro-looking OM System OM5 camera. New name, new branding for what used to be known as Olympus, and this newish camera released only last year, this OM5, which is based on very popular OMD EM5 Mark III, which I have reviewed a couple of years ago, and of course, uh, based on absolutely iconic 1970s OM1. It is surely not a camera for everyone, but if you like what you see, this tiny vintage looking camera, then this could be exactly what you are looking for. Keep watching, don't skip, and I'll tell you more about it. Olympus name is associated with cameras, quality cameras, for nearly 100 years now. They have created a legendary and seriously popular OM-1 camera in the early 1970s, and many other iconic models too. Since the digital camera invention, they somehow stayed slightly in the shadows of the big boys like Nikon, Canon and Panasonic. However, they have a very loyal and huge following. A lot of people, a lot of photographers, wouldn't go anywhere else but Olympus for professional cameras. Olympus and Panasonic collaboration created still very popular Micro Four Thirds system. First mirrorless cameras ever. And somehow Panasonic, in my opinion, has been stealing the limelight a little since. But when it comes to Micro Four Thirds cameras right now, Olympus OM system, as it is known now, have a better overall solution than Panasonic with cameras like this. This OM5 is a photography centered camera that is also very capable of shooting video too. It rocks 20 million pixel micro four thirds sensor with 120 point hybrid phase detect auto focusing system, which works a treat. Not something that you can say about any micro four thirds camera from Panasonic right now. Not exactly revolutionary new camera, but only a slight update to already cool Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III and the first camera from Olympus with a new OM system name on it. It is a very small camera. If you want a high quality camera that looks like something your dad used to shoot with when he was a youngster, but with all modern features like 4K video, fully articulated screen, webcam functionality and great autofocus, then you got it all with this. I don't think you can get a bad camera from any major brand these days. It's just some cameras might not meet your expectations or might not be suitable for specific type of shooting that you might want to do with it. So bearing that in mind, why would you choose this camera? It is small and light, and with that, it's also less obvious that you are shooting with a high quality camera in your hands, less in your face. And that is great if you want to shoot street photography and be less visible. Also the size and weight makes it perfect when you want to have as little as possible with you when traveling. Also Micro Four Third lenses are generally smaller and lighter and very often much more affordable. I've been testing this camera with this really cool OM System 20 mm f1.4 prime that could be just one lens for everything, equivalent to 40 mm standard field of view on a full frame camera. The camera itself is very easy to use, regardless if you are a complete beginner or a seasoned pro. The bottom layout and even the menu system that has been on Olympus cameras for a while are very easy to navigate and easy to use. I personally use several different brands of cameras and sometimes I have to remind myself what I am shooting with and look for certain settings endlessly. Strangely, with this OM5, although I've only just started using it, I feel instantly at home with it and like I have been using it for years already. It is very intuitive to use. It does take photos and video, obviously, but what are the standout features of this camera? Firstly, I really like the autofocusing system. Very simple and it works. There is no 10 different focusing modes you have to learn about or to choose from. It is less confusing than with most of current cameras. You can move your focusing point with the directional buttons to where you want the focus to be and shoot. As soon as you have a face in the frame, it will automatically select a face and track the eye. And with the simple touch of the screen, you can override that to focus on something else or someone else, or you can disable face detect altogether if that's what you need. By default, the focusing system is set to spot, but that can be changed to cross or a medium size or large zone, or even uh, full screen, uh, full sensor focusing for, for the camera to choose for you where it, it thinks the right focusing spot is. 
it doesn't do eye tracking in video, face tracking only, but it does it well and it works. Even though it is only 20 million pixel sensor, you do get an option to shoot massive files. Great for printing large. 50 million pixel files, exactly. Unlike many other brands, with this camera, you can do it handheld. This is a feature that you see with cameras very often these days, but most of the time, you need a tripod to use it. Here, you can shoot high res, big files, handheld. Useful if you want to print your files big. The sensor in this camera is not new, same as with all the Olympus cameras, but it is driven by new, improved, faster processing engine to perform tasks like the high resolution image quicker and better. There is live and de shooting. This slows down your shutter speed so you can capture movement like water, for example, with wider apertures, but without the need of ND filters. Very need. Stereo Sky Autofocus, this is for those of you who want to capture some astrophotography. Normally you'd have to go manual focus and focus on stars or guess that sweet spot as infinity very often isn't quite right. This camera does it all for you automatically. It focuses on stars for you. If you ever done long exposure astro and miss that focus by just a tiny bit, you'll find this feature very, very useful. Time-lapse is also available, plus many other features that make this camera very capable, but tiny workhorse. Stabilization is very good. This is certainly on par with Lumix cameras. With video, you get 4K up to 30 frames per second and full HD up to 120 frames per second. Red frame recording indicator for when filming yourself. Yeah, very easy to not know that you're recording yourself. OM Log 400 flat profile for more dynamic range when color grading. Shooter angle when recording video. Yes, something all Sony camera users can only dream about and something that makes filming, especially for beginners, so much easier. You don't have to change the shooter speed when filming. You just set the shooter angle to 180 degrees and whatever settings you change, like frame rates, doesn't affect the other settings much, much easier. Also, vertical video. The video files are in vertical orientation when you turn the camera into vertical position, no need to turn them in post. Less hassle, especially if you want to shoot with it for Instagram Reels, Stories, or TikTok, and edit on your phone. You also get totally separate settings for photos and video. So whatever you set when you take pictures and you change to video mode, the video settings are could be different than your photo settings. You don't need to change every time you swap over from photography to video. Something you only see in more expensive cameras, but something that makes shooting with this camera so much easier. For beginners, fully auto mode works well too, and you have a lot of picture presets, looks that you can use to eliminate fiddling with the photos after. No editing. Decent battery life, it lasts easily for a full day in normal conditions, and the battery can be charged in a camera while on the move by a power bank via the USB too. Overall, for its size and seemingly toy-like appearance, this little camera can deliver great photos and video, and it is really a pleasure, fun to shoot with. Builds, yes, it's small and light. It weighs body only, only 414 gram. Very nicely laid out controls, making it super intuitive to use. One SD card slot supporting UHS two cards. No headphone socket, maybe not a tragedy, but the lack of it might be not be ideal, especially for those who do want to shoot video content with it and make sure the audio is good before checking the files on the computer or even before recording. Micro HDMI socket, hated by literally anyone who ever used one, but not really a surprise in a camera of this size. What is surprising is that micro USB socket. So 20th century now. Why any camera or device coming out now in 20s hasn't got USB-C socket is beyond me. The biggest niggle I have about its build really. Strange, but it is what it is, micro USB. Fully articulated screen, very decent electronic viewfinder, and the camera is weather, light rain, and dust resistant. Well, not resistant, but sealed against light rain or dust, light water or dust. Price value for money. Right now, at the time of filming this, it retails for about £1,200 or $1,100 for body only, and it comes in this classic silver or black versions. You also get a lot of camera and lens kits options available, giving you an option to get a lens with it cheaper than the camera and the lens on their own after. It is pricey for what it is. 
it has got competition from Lumix in the form of very good G9 and even G7 cameras and Olympus own OM DEM5 Mark III, especially if you shop any of those second hand. But if you like this vintage look and you need specific to this camera functions like live ND filter and steroid night autofocus, then this could be it. This could be for you. As I said at the beginning of this video, it is not a camera for everyone. The price, although not cheap, puts it in the middle. It is a mid-range camera. It's more than a toy and less than a pro camera. And it looks, will appeal to a lot of vintage connoisseurs or sentimental people who actually had one or remember someone shooting with the original OM-1 vintage camera. Conclusion. I felt totally at home shooting with it instantly. It looks great and it delivers. It's not a pro camera and it's not trying to be one. It is a camera that you go for when you want more than a smartphone but less than a more professional or, or big camera. It's the one that is a joy to carry with you and to shoot with when you want to be less conspicuous. It is small but it is exchangeable lens camera and it offers full manual control and a ton of features that you find in the pro cameras. Paired with the right lens, with the right lens for you, it can be a perfect camera to travel with or to take out with you when you want to go minimalistic. Perfectly suitable for vlogging or for general content creation and great for shooting vertical video with too. Slightly pricey for what it is right now, but the price could be justified if you have an emotional connection to this brand and the Providence, this line of cameras, the OM, since the original OM-1 over 50 years ago carries. I like it for its ease of use and the quality it delivers. Sometimes it is just nice not to have to drag a big camera and a big lens with you and still be able to shoot raw and have fully manual control and feel of a bigger camera, but in a smaller package like this. It's a good camera, fun, pretty, tiny, and one that could be an upgrade from your smartphone. I do like it. And this is it from me. If this video was in some way informative or at least entertaining, please give me the thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. And we are rock and rolling again. I've only just started using it. I feel instantly at home with it and I like it. I've only just started using it. I feel instantly at home with it and I like, I have... Paired it with a... Paired with the right lens. Paired with the right lens. Paired, paired, paired. Paired with a... Slightly pricey for what it is right now, but the price could be justified if you have... If,